Let's step into the shadows of the feared Mongols Biker Club, where an enigmatic leader holds all the cards and calls all the shots. Shrouded in mystery, this figure holds sway with an iron fist and strikes fear into the hearts of all. Who is the cunning puppeteer pulling the strings of the Brotherhood's might? Scott Jr. Erickson is the most fearsome Mongol leader ever. In the year 1980, Scott Jr. Erickson became a member of the Mongol motorcycle gang. He served as president of the national club four times and saw it expand from a few hundred members in California to thousands of members all over the world. Junior prioritized the Mongols over everything else, demonstrating that the Mongols are more than simply a motorcycle club, they are a brotherhood, which is a large part of the reason the club has become as well known as it is today, a brotherhood for which he had been willing to lay down his life for 30 years. A friend and Junior went fishing at the lake in 1974 when he was very young. A large man with a lengthy beard and hair rode up on a motorcycle and parked it near the lake while they were there. As they watched the rider dismount and light up, they saw that guy was wearing a vest with a Mongols motorcycle club patch. Even though the man was only there for about 10 minutes, the impression he left on 14-year-old Junior, who was there to see it, remained with him forever. Do you know what he did next with his thought? He began daydreaming about owning a Harley Davidson motorcycle after picking up Easy Rider magazine and reading them religiously. At the age of 18 in 1978, Junior spent $3,400 on a Harley Davidson Super Glide. Not long after arriving in California, he began to hear reports of a bloody conflict between two of the largest motorcycle clubs, the Hells Angels and the Mongols, over the state's territory. Junior began interacting with other club members as time went on. Junior joined the Mongols that day and began participating in weekend riots with them. After a few months, he was invited to the clubhouse of the Mongols' San Diego chapter, where he was formally introduced to the chapter's members and president. Junior's personality and demeanor changed for the worse the day he joined the gang. His brothers had given him a Smith & Wesson 38 Special as an initiation present, and he had grown his hair and beard long. Junior had no fear and thought that he was invincible when he first joined the Mongol Motorcycle Club. But he quickly learned otherwise when three of his brothers were killed in the first year. Two years later, Junior and his brothers got into a fight at a pub with a member of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, and Junior wound up shooting and killing the Hells Angel. Local publications blamed the Mongols Motorcycle Club for the shooting, and the police went on a manhunt for the gang's members when the incident gained widespread media attention. After hearing that three of his brothers had been arrested and charged with first-degree murder and that the police had issued a warrant for his arrest, Junior hastily got out of town, transferred to a Mongol chapter in Tulsa, changed his name, and hid in Oklahoma for six months with the help of his Mongol brothers. Junior's arrest didn't come long after. In 1986, at the age of 26, Junior was paroled out of prison. He was happy to be out of prison, but he was unhappy with the conditions of his parole, which stated that he was not to have any contact with any member of the Mongols Motorcycle Club for one year, and if he did, he would be sent back to prison. Unwilling to turn around, to comply with his parole, Junior got a lawful job, but the day he was released, he reconnected with his brothers and almost immediately became the vice president of the Mongol San Diego chapter. A year later, he was asked to become the Mongols' national president, making him the youngest national president in the club's history. As time went on, Junior became increasingly devoted to the Mongols, to the detriment of nearly all of his other connections. In 1998, Junior and one of his club brothers were out at a pub when they were attacked by a man wielding a knife. To defend themselves, Junior smashed a glass over the assailant's head, knocking him out. Junior and his brother thought the incident was over, so they rode off on their motorcycles. However, the man decided to press charges, and a warrant was issued for Junior's arrest a few days later. When he was taken into custody, Junior tried to explain that he had acted in self-defense, but the police officers didn't seem to care. After a favorable judgment was overturned and Junior's return to jail was ordered, the parole officer found that he had breached his parole. Junior became a folk hero in the Golden State because he tirelessly fought for the rights of Mongols everywhere. What are your views on him and his passion for his motorcycle club? Do let us know your opinions in the comments below.